Hey guys, welcome back to Wendell Fishing. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a DIY rod holder for your float tube. Now here's the thing, this design is not just about holding one or two rods. Uh, I made a design that's gonna fit your pliers, your fish grip, your, your phone, and even a DIY GoPro boom mount. I had the cut list, I have all the links of what you need in order to make this thing. It doesn't get much easier than this video right here. Let's hop in. All right, we're gonna mod this guy right here. This is the number one selling float tube in the United States. It is the Fish Cat 4. Now I have the Deluxe version, and the biggest difference between the Fish Cat 4 and the Fish Cat Deluxe is really simple. It's just these seat pads. Um, the Fish Cat comes with foam, and the Fish Cat Deluxe, actually, as you can see here, you, they're inflatable, so they make it a whole lot easier to deflate, pack down for transportation. All right, so this is a nice float tube, but the thing about float tube fishing, it's a minimalist way of fishing. So not a lot to these guys. I mean, we got a little bit of storage here and some D-rings, as you see right here. Not a lot to work with when it comes to doing DIY modifications. So I've been thinking up a design for a couple weeks now, and I needed it to have a place for my pliers, my fish grips, a place for my drinks if I wanted to, a place for my phone, two rod holders, and some DI leashes to boot, and I did it, here we go. All right, so don't get overwhelmed, there is a variety of parts. I am going to provide you with a parts list and a cut list to make it easy. The first thing you're gonna need is a six foot piece of one and a half inch PVC. And I chose PVC over ABS for a couple of reasons. First, PVC is a lot more flexible and I like working with it and I have in a lot of other my DIY modification videos. And while the ABS is a little bit stronger and has a higher impact and shock rating, I also found out that the ABS is more expensive and a lot more difficult to find. But if you really want that black pipe look, then I recommend the ABS um, because painting the PVC is a pain. And to be honest with you, it doesn't hold paint very well, just chip, unless you put down primer. And at that point, all the money you saved on PVC over ABS is lost. So if you want the black look for the rod holder, choose ABS, it's gonna be a little more expensive, but if it doesn't matter to you, PVC is the way to go, which is what I'm using during this build. Let's get the cutting. First break out that six foot piece of one and a half inch PVC. The reality is you're probably gonna have to buy a 10 foot piece because that's what they come with your local hardware store unless you have a really cool hardware store like I do that'll actually let you cut it in the store, um, which is uh, save you a lot of time and a lot of mess at home. So go ahead and grab that and these are the cuts that you're going to need to make. All right, you can make these cuts on a variety of different things. You can use a miter saw or a chop saw just go slow so at the end it doesn't chip it out or you can use a hacksaw if you don't have a power tool and so you're going to need two 11 and a half inch pieces a 10 inch a nine and a half inch eight inch six inch and three two inch sections of pvc so go ahead and make those cuts <laughs> The next cut you're gonna to need to make is you're gonna need a three inch piece of PVC and it'd be really nice if you can cut this down in the store because if you buy a 10 foot section of this, it's gonna be pretty expensive. You are gonna to need to cut this to five inches. Go ahead and make that cut. And the last piece of pipe you're going to need to cut is a 25 inch piece of three quarter inch PVC. So here's the thing, if you have to buy a 10 foot section of this, not a big deal, because this is not that expensive. And as a reminder, I'm gonna put the cut list in the description below, no worries. You're also gonna need some couplers and crosses and reducers and bushings, so let me walk you through what you're gonna need. And here's the thing, I'll have a link below, but you can also grab these in the plumbing section of your hardware store. And let me walk you through the rest of your parts list. All right, you're gonna need uh, two of these guys. This is a one and a half inch cross. Uh, coming in four ways. Uh, you're gonna need a one and a half inch 45 degree. You're gonna need two of those. You're also gonna need a three and a half inch to one and a half inch reducer, two of those. You're gonna need a one and a half inch 90 degree. You need two of those. You need a three quarter inch cap. Um, you're gonna need a one and a half inch to three quarter inch bushing. You're gonna need a one quarter inch thumb screw, a washer for that thumb screw, some PVC cement, Velcro straps, and a phone holder, cup holder with a gooseneck adjustable arm. And last but not least, this guy. 
Uh, it's kind of a GoPro tripod mount adapter that is adjustable and that's a quarter inch right there. For most of the stuff, you're just gonna get the glue out and start sticking it together, except for the GoPro boom and the rod holder. For the rod holders, you're gonna have to do a little more DIY work to get that flare on the end that you, that you see there and also how to get this cut. So I created two other videos on how to do that that'll walk you through uh, and I made them out of one and a half inch PVC as well. So it's perfect for this mod and the end result is this. The reason for the two videos is because one's designed for a spin cast reel and the other is for a bait caster. And if you have a bait caster, you know there's a little knob on the back of the rod that won't fit nicely into the spin cast design. So that's why there's two. It's fairly easy to do. All you need to do is take a heat gun, heat up the inside and outside of your PVC, then stick this over a wine bottle until it flares out. Then you make your last cuts down and over. If you want to see the video, you can, but that's essentially how you do it, and most of you will be able to figure it out. The next thing you're going to do is take your three inch PVC, cut to a length of five inches, and measure down one half inch, make a mark, do the same thing on the opposite side, then take a 3 16 inch drill bit and drill those holes. This is where you're going to attach your DIY leashes for your pliers and your fish grips. Good to go there. Now go and grab your one quarter inch drill bit and drill a hole directly in the top of your cap. Next what you're gonna do is take your thumb screw. I like to grab onto it with the pliers and then twist it on up through. Now take your adjustable GoPro mount. It's a quarter inch right there. That's why we got the quarter inch thumb screw. Screw that in. Nice and tight, and boom, this is what goes on top of your GoPro mount. Let me show you how to put this all together and attach it to your boat. I see way too many videos where people are just attaching them to their boat with the D-ring. That's way too much slack for me. I want a much tighter fit. So stick around to the end, and I'll show you how to make it perfect. So what I recommend is just putting these together first without gluing it, because once you glue it, as you know, there's no room for adjustment. And you're likely going to want to make those adjustments. Maybe you don't want the GoPro boom that high. Maybe you want the angle off. Maybe you don't want it on the left side of the boat, um, because you're left-handed. You want it on the right side of the boat so it's not in your way when you're casting. So it's good to just kind of put it together, put it on your boat, see how it fits. All right, let me show you how this all goes together. You're gonna take your reducer, put it into your two inch cut, put that into your 90 degree elbow. This is your six inch cut over to your cross. When you go down, you're gonna put your two inch cut into your 45. Um, this is gonna be your eight inch cut up to your reducer, up to your three inch pipe which is cut at five inches. This is going to be your nine and a half inch cut over to your cross. This is going to be your eleven and a half inch uh, flared rod holder going down one inch to your 45 and then back here this is going to be your 10 inch cut. It's going to go to your 90 degree elbow up to your bushing and then over your bushing you're going to put in your 25 inch cut up to the cap with the adjustable GoPro off the back. So let's go ahead and put this bad boy together, but don't glue it yet. Don't glue it yet. All right, this is how it looks all put together. So let's go ahead and put this on the float tube and I'll show you why the angles are the way they are, especially these two 45s. All right, now you're starting to see the method to the madness. This is how it's gonna sit on your float tube, but it's gonna be a little higher up. And what we're gonna do is wrap a Velcro piece around this float tube section and around the outside, which is gonna look really nice and tight to the float tube. And also, we're gonna run another Velcro section behind the seat around the tube back under, which is gonna hold this side nice and tight. And when you do that, these little 45s down here are gonna sit nicely and keep this thing from rocking or falling out when you have your fish grips and pliers and rod and GoPro on the back. So let me go ahead and Velcro this to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Then we'll make some marks, then we'll glue it. All right, the front one's fairly easy. Just take your Velcro strap. All right, for the back side, you're just gonna run three of these Velcro strips together and run them around your boat and tighten it up. <laughs> there it is. Nice and Velcroed on the, on the front. 
nice and velcroed on the back. And as you can tell, if I pull on this, the 45s down here keep it from pulling out. So that was part of the design. So now what I highly recommend is pulling this back until the 45s are touching the boat and then adjust everything just like you want it. So you can see here, uh, I don't necessarily want that going out. So you can start adjusting all your pieces. A few things to note before you start gluing this thing. Make sure the holes that you drilled, one's on the inside, one's on the outside from where you will be sitting. And also, it's also nice to kind of have this uh, adjustable knob so you can kind of turn around and grab it. So I kind of want that there. Um, and then just to be super safe versus sorry, uh, just go around and marking kind of how it's sitting because how you have it right now, it's perfect. And so you can start marking all the pipe and how it's perfectly how it's sitting now. So when you take it off and glue it, you can put it right back into that place at the angle in which it's sitting. So go around and do that to everything. Now that you have it all marked, you can take it off the Velcro and take it back to the workbench because we still got a few more mods to do. All right, break out the PVC cement. Let's start gluing this thing. As you can see, I glued everything except for this middle piece. And the reason I'm pausing right now is because as of right now, if you are entering your float tube off a dock and you accidentally drop this in the water, this would go all the way to the bottom. So if you wanted to make this so it floated, you can go ahead and grab some of this insulated foam, shove it in there, spray it in, and then glue the last sections. And this would make this bad boy float and you would never lose it. So let's go and do that. Now, before that foam starts to expand <laughs> over around where you need to glue, go ahead and glue it real quickly. Now, don't worry if that foam comes out the bottom here at your 45s, it's easy just to cut off. Now they're all glued up, let's make some DIY leashes for your plier and fish grip holder right here. It's pretty easy. To make DIY kayak leashes for just about anything, uh, you're gonna need a few items. And what I did is I went down to the local thrift store and you can get old phone chargers for 25 cents. I mean, there's a ton of these. Make sure they're the pigtails right here. I mean, ancient. Look at those things. I don't even remember what these were used for. Grab a few of these, depending on how many leashes for this particular design, you're gonna need two. You're also gonna need some eight inch cable ties and some heat shrink tubes. If you don't have these things, there's a link in the description below. The tools you're gonna need to make these is two pair of pliers, a pair of scissors, carpenter's knife, and a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, man, I use this in a ton of my DIY videos. Let me show you how to make these. Take each one of your chargers, snip it off at the furthest end you possibly can, right there and right there. Do it for all of them. All right, next you're gonna take a 5 16 shrink tube and cut a quarter off of it. Do that twice. Now you're gonna take the 5 16 shrink tube, put it in over one of your ends. And what I like to do is attach it directly to the tool. These are awesome booms aluminum pliers. If you don't have a pair of fishing pliers, and I'm not talking about a pair of like pliers you have in your toolbox, an actual pair of fishing pliers won't rust. These are awesome, but here, I'm gonna flip this around and then you're going to attach this with a zip tie. Tighten that nice and tug it with your hands. Now, go ahead and grab your two pair of pliers, grab an end, and the other end, like that. And pull. Just get a couple more clicks out of that. Make sure it's super tight. The idea here that it's so tight that this end starts to flare back out a little bit. When you got that, you know you're good to go. Go ahead and put that shrink tube over the end. Now what you want to do is take the carpenter's knife and cut this as close as you possibly can to make that flush. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the edge of a table. That's what you're looking for right there. When you're good there, go ahead and apply heat with your heat gun. You also notice if you have a really old phone charger, if you run the heat gun over it, it makes it look nice and shiny. So I'm gonna go and do that, make it look new. Look at that. Just like the day it came out in 1980. 
Next, you're gonna do the exact same thing, except you're going to attach this end right here and run the heat. Now, this is the inside, so I want the pliers on the inside, I want the fish grips on the outside. And you know it's the inside because the 45 degree angle points that way. So let's go ahead and attach that. Just a little tip here, don't get too close to this rubber or it will actually start to separate because it's too hot. So stay at a good distance, but enough distance to make sure the shrink tube actually starts shrinking. actually made another one of these, uh, attached it to my fish grip so you can see here, but this time I put a cure beaner on it because this tool goes back and forth between my fishing kayak and my float tube. And you can do that to this as well. It's all personal preference. So if you move your tools around uh, or if you have doubles, you'll, you can just directly connect it. If you don't have doubles and you move back and forth, a carabiner might be the way to go. So you can go ahead and attach that to the other side. And keep in mind, if you use a carabiner, you're probably gonna have to drill a little larger hole for this to fit in there because the uh, drill bit size I used was made just to stick the wire and the carabiner is a little larger. So if you need to do that now, go ahead. All right, now that I drilled that hole a little larger, I can attach my carabiner. Now that the glue is dried on this bad boy, let's go ahead and attach it back to the float tube and we got a couple more things we gotta do. All right, let's Velcro this back on. Okay, now you're gonna go grab your gooseneck adjustable phone holder. I like this guy. Uh, it's a Rax Fly, see the brand there. And as you can see, when I start twisting this, it starts to expand and we're gonna put this into that reducer that we just built. Also, uh, because our phones are expensive nowadays, I want something actually that's gonna hold it really well. And as you can see here, and you probably can hear it when I click, when I start to push it together, it starts to click. Now, cool thing about that is it won't come back out unless I hit this button and it slowly decompresses. So you know that you know that you know when your phone gets trapped around this, it's gonna be tight, it's not gonna come out. All right, now let's go put this into the reducer. That is not coming out. Oh, that's awesome. Check that out. Sitting here in your float tube, your phone, right there, perfectly angled, out of your way. Oh, yeah. Sweet. All right, let's go ahead and put a rod in here, see what that looks like. Oh, I can pick any one of these. This one's actually made for a spin cast. Look at that. It's going to keep this out of the way from your float tube just how you wanted it. A word of caution, if you put that foam in there, I wouldn't go shoving your rods in there to see if they fit because they're gonna get super sticky. So wait for that expanding foam to dry. All right, now you probably noticed you have one of these left and one more strap if you bought the link that I put in the description below, which is perfect. Because what you're gonna do is you can actually buy rod holders off of the website Outcast Fishing. Uh, but it's, I guess, like $25 here. You can see it on Amazon, $25, $30, and this costs you around a buck fifty. So I'm gonna show you how this attaches to your float tube in case you need another rod holder. All right, I'm gonna do is run your Velcro through the tube. Make sure the furry side is showing. Wrap it around your float tube here. And go ahead and tighten that. Really good. And there you have it. Stick that bad boy right in there. And you have yourself a second rod holder for your float tube. Really simple. Last step, just take your GoPro adapter. You probably have a ton of these things. Uh, this is a GoPro Black 7 is what I use. And it's what I shoot all my videos on. So if you're interested, uh, that's in the link below. I'm just going to attach this. There you go. And the reason you want it adjustable is so you can get what kind of whatever angle you want. That looks good to me. You might be wondering why I like the fish grips on the outside. But here's the thing, I don't carry a net with me. So a lot of times when I catch a big fish, take that bass lip, I'll go ahead and clip it into the fish grip and then I'll throw it back on the water and let it swim around until I can get my camera ready so it's not sitting there or flapping in my lap. So uh, that's why I have the hole for the fish grips on the outside and the pliers on the inside. As promised, here's the videos for the rod holders uh, for the bait caster and here's the one for the spin cast reel. Hey, if this video brought you value, you, please hit that sub and bell notification, that like button, and I will keep them coming. All right, guys, see you out in the water. Bye.